according to the dictionary consistency is being in the habit of doing the same thing on a regular regular basis consistency is the act of living by the same principle is the practice of being the same when it comes to attitude behavior beliefs and characteristics our focus tonight is on consistency consistency in our work with the lord consistent people are those who are who achieve things of value and meaning in their lives by not changing their opinions about what about what they want consistency is one of the keys to help people succeed in their daily lives when it comes to their work their relationships and their worship the benefits of consistency people know what to expect from you therefore they can depend on you you are more successful in achieving your goals Uh, people who are consistent are good witnesses for god Consistency keeps people close to God by having an intimate, intimate relationship with Him. God also expects consistency from us. Why? Because He is consistent. He will not require us to do something that He does not require Himself to do. We can depend on God because He is consistent in what He says He will do. He stands stands firm forever. You and I uh, might be inconsistent in many things, but God is never inconsistent in anything. All His promises are yea and amen. That means that God will do exactly what He said He would do. The Bible says in Psalm 33, 11, The plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of His heart to all generations. God never changes. This is a major sign of consistency because God does not change, we can trust Him. God is reliable, He remains constant in His attitude and love towards you and I at all times. You would always know what to expect from God uh, when you read the Bible. Not only will God always mean what He says, but He will always follow through on what He says. Now, the Bible contains many scriptures and examples about consistency because God expects consistency from all his people, all his children. Here are the areas in which God expects consistency. God expects consistency in obedience. God expects consistency in faithfulness. God expects consistency, uh, consistent follow through, follow through on promises and vows. So if you vow to God, you better, you better make sure you follow through. God expect a consistent relationship with him also. When you are consistent, you are also committed. Your commitment should not change with circumstances. Some people give up instead of being steadfast and consistent when things don't go well, when things don't go well with them. These are the times when it is evident if a person is consistent or not. Consistent people will keep going, but inconsistent people will give themselves excuses to give up. The Bible says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. A single characteristic of those who succeed in the challenges of life is this element of consistency. Joseph in that Egyptian Dion John did not give up. Paul in the Philippian jail did not give up. Daniel in Babylonian captivity did not give up. And God did not forget any of them. Daniel is our case study tonight. Uh, While we can be certain that most scholars would put Daniel in his early teen years when he was taken to Babylon, so we were, we are likely we we likely have a, a teenage boy who is abruptly abruptly removed from his hometown and taken to a foreign pagan nation to serve a pagan king. Quite an overwhelming event for a boy of that age. Often the tendency for many of us to succumb to the culture around us 
for some it becomes easy or easier to simply give up trying to hold on to the biblical principles and go along with the culture around us. If Daniel is saying anything to us across the not across the a number of centuries, he's challenging each and every one of us not to give up and be consistent. Again, one of the admirable qualities of Daniel is consistency. One kingdom fell, another one rose. Rulers came and went, but he survived. Daniel served under Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar and then under his son Belshazzar. Daniel also served Darius, the king of Persia, who conquered Babylon with distinction unto his death, and then also served Cyrus, his successor. How did he do it? How did he survive? Consistency is the key. So let us look at a few, a few principles that we can learn from Daniel. I am going to read Daniel 1, 1 to 8. Daniel 1, 1 to 8 from the New King James Version. In the third year of the reign of uh, uh, Jeho, Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave um, Jeho, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried to the land of Shina, to the house of his God, and he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, were good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, Azariah. To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave names, he gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, Ananiah, he gave Shadrach, and uh, Mishael, uh, Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of king's delicacies, nor with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he requested of the, uh, the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So principle, principle number one that we learn from Daniel is that we should not give in but be resistance. We should not give in but be resistance. We have a tendency to conform to the standards of being transformed by the Holy Spirit. They wanted Daniel to change his language, his literature, his lifestyle, and his loyalty. But Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's food and drink. Where did he draw the line? On God's, on God's word. Daniel had a solid foundation from his early years from parents who instilled in him godliness. He was mature and spiritual very early. He did not have to uphold <coughs> The Jewish standards in Babylon was away from home in a foreign pagan kingdom without his parents around. He could have eaten the food without a second thought. A modern example of this would be a child goes to a friend's house and they were playing a video game or watching a movie that they aren't allowed to watch. Since parents are not around, the child can easily get away with playing the game or watching the movie. Same thing is going on here. Daniel didn't have to maintain the Jewish standards, but he did. The young boy had had the precepts of God as well as integrity so instilled in him, even as a teenager, that it mattered to him whether he pleased God or not. And we should remember that he grew up during the most godless times in, the, uh, in Judah's history. It didn't matter what everyone around you was doing, peer pressure, of course, we all know is a very powerful thing. It's because of many young people losing their faith. 
as followers of Christ, we have to decide up front, just like Daniel, that we are not going to compromise our biblical, biblical principles no matter what. Our standard is God's word, not what the world says. Daniel did not give in. He resisted the temptation to compromise. And may God help us to stand on our convictions even when we stand alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, principle number two, don't give up, be consistent. Don't give up, be consistent. I'm going to read Daniel uh, 1, 6 to, uh, 8 to 16. Daniel 1, 8 to 16. Uh, but Daniel um, purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he requested that the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God has brought Daniel into favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of, uh, and the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord the king who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuch had set over Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test, your, please test your servants for ten days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of young men who eat the portion of king delicacies as you see fit. So deal with your servant. So deal with your servant. So um, he consented with them on this matter and tested them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, the features uh, appeared. Their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than the all the young men who ate the portions of king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portions of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. So we see in this particular case, Daniel did not give up. He was consistent in his actions. For 10 days, they did not give up to prove God's power because I'm sure in those 10 days, they must have been praying like crazy, right? <laughs> that God don't let us down, right? Unfortunately, uh, we live in a compromised age, one in which most people float along with the current vogue whenever, it, wherever, wherever it leads them. So Jesus said, no one having put his hand on the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. It is all right to be countercultural in this present world. What we have to do is focus in our mind to determine and resolve to claim victory, claim victory over the temptation of this world, the flesh and the devil. So everyone is encouraged to claim Daniel 1, 8 and trust the God of Daniel to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So actually throughout the Bible, you see the theme of do not give up, persevere. We mentioned about Joseph. Uh, Joseph did not give up from the pit to the prison to the palace. He was consistent. He was consistent. Uh, Paul did not give up, uh, though he was stoned, shipwrecked, in prison, and uh, beaten like crazy, right? God honors, and that's one thing we have to remember, God honors those who are consistent. Okay, and then, of course, we're going to, the third principle, of course, don't give up, be persistent. Don't give up, be persistent. So, so um, as for this, I'm going to read Daniel uh, 1, 17-21. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days, when the king has said that, that they should be brought in, the uh, chief of the eunuchs brought them in before the Kadnezer. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Ananiah, Mashael, and Azariah, therefore, they served before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times, ten times better than all the magicians, astrologers who were in his realm. 
Thus, Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Now, God showed himself strong in the Hebrew boys. The king found them better than everybody else. Okay. And also, Daniel uh, continued for the next 70 years, seven different kings uh, during that period. So, the, the point the point I want to make, though, that we all need to take is that God is looking for some Daniels today. Men and women of God who are resistant to sin, consistent in their Christian work, and persistent no matter what happens. Uh, consistency is not born in the heat of battle. That's another point. Every decision I made simpler when we have made the very first decision to say, I am not, I am going to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, okay? Um, so that um, in the, even though that particular verse was mentioned in the context of worrying over food and drink and clothing, but it is something that we all need to keep in mind that we should keep our choices, made that choice to seek God first. So everything else that we look at, we'll have to go back and ask that question. Okay, should I be services today? Then the question will be, am I seeking the kingdom of God first? <laughs> in what way should I respond to a post? In what way should I do something? We make all, all decisions consistent with our seeking God first. Okay, so because we all also have to remember that opportunities are lost or won on consistency. Beware that your inconsistency may become excuses for some people as to why they will not accept Jesus. If you are Christian, somebody may say, why do you watch that movie? Why do you dance that way? <laughs> why do you dress that way? Things of that nature, right? We got to keep that in mind and be consistent with what God is saying with where we should be. And one of the stories that we all are familiar with, of course, is when King Darius sought to reorganize his kingdom, he planned to put Daniel in charge of all the rulers. Uh, though his fear sought to destroy him, no negli uh, negligence or corruption was found in him. Okay? There was no skeleton in his closet, no now deleted tweet. <laughs> Or one hot mic soundbite that was recorded, that recorded an embarrassing moment about Daniel. So they concluded that we shall, we shall not find any ground of accusation against Daniel unless we find it against him regarding the law of his God. Okay. So even Daniel's enemies recognized his consistency. He had a, a conduct that was matched by his calling. So, these uh, satraps and governor tricked the governor into standing or into signing. We all know the story. A law that says that the law for, uh, was forbidding anyone in the kingdom for 30 days from worshiping any other god except a royal statue that of King Darius. Okay. And of course, Daniel knew what is going on. He went home and his upper room, his, his, his window opened towards Jerusalem. He nailed down uh, on his knees and three day three times a day he prayed and gave thanks to before his God as was his custom since his early days. It wasn't like Daniel wasn't aware of the new decree, but he was completely aware, but it didn't matter to him. His fellow rulers were maliciously uh, trying to accuse him maliciously, but the king himself made a comment that said, your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. And apparently, he believed that, the king believed that Daniel's devotion would be the key to his deliverance. Again, pleasing God was the most important thing to Daniel. And that's one of the things we also have to keep in mind, that the Bible makes it very clear, uh, uh, clear that if you are following Christ, the way we should, and we are going to suffer persecution. And nobody likes that, but hey, that's part of what the Bible says, okay? Whether it could be political, it could be personal. Either way, it is crucial for us not to succumb 
or yield to the enemy's advances. We have to put on the whole armor of God so that we'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Uh, just like Daniel, our first priority should be serving and honoring God. Now, punishment for the disobeying the prayer law was be to be cast into the den of the lion. Well, like I said, we all know the story. The question is, if it's you, okay, would you close your window before you pray <laughs> and make sure that nobody is seeing you? Or would you close your eyes or not bow, bow, bow your head or pretend that you're not praying? Uh, but when was, uh, uh, but, but Daniel didn't do all that. Uh, when he was brought out of the den of the lion, no injuries whatsoever were found on him because he had trusted in his God. Now, temptation, of course, in persecution is to give in. But we should all remember never to fear. The Bible says, I, God, I have, I, in God, the Bible says, in God I have put my trust, I shall not be afraid. What mere mind can do to me. We must live the same consistent godly life in the face of persecution uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, to be consistent of God, there are two things we need to keep in mind. Two things we need to keep in mind and help us to be consistent. The first thing, of course, is the fact that we have to be sure that we have a strong and active prayer life, which requires great spiritual discipline on our part. Uh, you cannot be, you cannot be a consistent believer if you don't have a very solid Prayer life. Remember what Jesus said to the disciples, the same, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation. Okay. So it's, it's very, very, very important that we prayer life must be very strong, strong. And if you read the book of Daniel, there's a, you wrote a lot of different prayers that, uh, that uh, are really, really very powerful. And some of them affect the history of this period anyway and also move by God's hand. Now, if you look at his prayers very quickly, I'm just going to summarize three things out of his prayers that we should keep in mind. One of the fact that uh, sometimes God answers your prayer right away, but sometimes spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare will delay the, the answer reaching out to you. Because, uh, but uh, Daniel was persistent, was persistent to make sure that he didn't give up. In actual fasted for 21 days before he got the answer to his prayer. Uh, also, Daniel's prayers emphasize the importance of confession and seeking forgiveness. So mercy and healing cannot happen, cannot happen sometimes until we admit our sins and wrongdoings. And number three, uh, Daniel's prayer teaches the importance of knowing God's character. God's character. Knowing that uh, if God sometimes would allow us to fall into sin and its consequences but if we continue to return to our sin. Uh, God is merciful, we all know. Uh, he hears our cries and binds our wounds, but we also have to remember that He is a consuming fire. So uh, the other thing that we need to be consistent with this course is reading the Word of God, reading the Word of God. In doing so, we remain established and reading the word of God help us to grow and strengthen our faith. Now we know that Daniel studied God's word diligently because as he was reading or rereading over and over again, Jeremiah 25 and 29, he saw the promises of God and decided to claim it because God said that um, a promise in, uh, of restoration of Jerusalem after 70 years of exile. So that's the what Daniel was praying for, and as a result of his prayer, God also revealed to me, revealed that to him the seventy weeks, which is way about the Messiah coming and also about the out, uh, outline of the second coming of Christ. So what I'm saying is that what what Daniel studied the Word of God to be able to not only understand what is going on at that particular time, was also given the opportunity to see the future. So it doesn't mean, of course, being consistent doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. Okay? It may be three steps forward and one step back. But over time, we should see that there's growth going on. 
Uh, God is not looking for sprinters, he's looking for marathoners, okay, in which case, looking for people who are going to stand by him for the long haul. Now, we all know, uh, we all work in process, but God, and the growth, growth can occur if we continuously apply, apply what we already know. God is going to trust us with larger projects if we are faithful in the small one. So don't, don't just remember the parable of the talents. It seems unfair that the one who invested and bought food should actually receive more. Okay. Okay. But that's exactly the way it works in God's kingdom, right? God invests in those who embrace and put to use the understanding that they already have. Okay. So we have to put to use uh, what we already know because we are all co-laborers who labor us in the kingdom of God. Uh, many of us are action people would like to do things, but the kingdom of God is a little bit different. Growth and food appears as we abide, not as we strive. Now, uh, to wrap up anyway, Daniel was a very faithful servant of God. He did not waver or compromise. And uh, when hardships arose, he put God first and foremost in his life. Uh, Daniel was do, doing exactly what Paul wrote to say that whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord you serve when you serve the Lord God. That consistently also drowns out distraction, strengthen our resolve against attacks and builds new habits that will last a lifetime. We can apply many of Daniel's principles in our life today. Uh, to close, God is looking for F-A-T-T people, fat people. <laughs> but F-A-T-T stands for faithful, available, trustworthy, and teachable. So faithful, available, trustworthy, and teachable. So are you willing to be thrown into the lion's den for the glory of God? That's the question we all need to answer.